I'm pleased to say we're joined by one of the new tour card holders for 2024, Lucas Feinig. Thanks for the time, Lucas. How are you doing? Hello, guys. Uh, yes, I'm fine. Um, I'm really glad to uh, make the podcast with you and uh, to give you some answer for your questions. And yes, let's start. Well, it's great to have you on. And we're, we're talking just a, a few days before you make the trip to Munich to play on the European Tour again. How much are you looking forward to playing in front of that home crowd over the Easter weekend? Uh, I'm really happy that I have qualified for Munich and Belgium before as well, uh, because uh, Munich is a fantastic city. I live in Bavaria and Munich is the big city of (laughs) Bavaria. And yes, to play uh, for the German crowd is also fantastic and um, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy that I have qualified for it glad to hear and it will be the first time you're playing in front of a German crowd on the European tour as a tour card holder as well what has life been like so far being one of those one two eight on the PDC tour a little bit has changed uh, because the tournaments are during the week and not on the weekend it's a little bit difficult to uh, uh, to complain with work and darts but uh, when you also look on darts it's uh, completely different to the challenge tour it's more quiet it's yeah it, it's another feeling to play as a tour card holder and I'm really glad that, I, that I'm one of them now well we'll come back to <laughs> Q School, how you won your tour card a a bit later on, but as this is the first time we've had you on our podcast as a guest, let's go back to the start for you in darts. Where did it begin? How did you first discover the game? Uh, First discovered the game um, in my childhood. My mom and dad was really good softball players. My mom won some national and international titles in softball, and I think when I was six years old, we had a Big soft tip automat. I don't know the right English word for that at home. And yes, I also threw darts on it. And after I was 13, we uh, moved to Bavaria. Uh, and my stepfather had a bar with some soft tip automat. And yeah, when I was 14 years old, and what do you do the whole day? You play darts there. Yeah. And yeah, that, that was the beginning with 14 years. I think when I was 19 years old, I started with so, uh, Steel Dad as well, uh, with a good friend. And yeah, that was the Steel Dad beginning. So it sounds like you were hooked on darts straight away after being introduced to it by your mum and dad. Was there a lot of opportunities to play darts back then when you started out? Yes, uh, as I moved to Bavaria, uh, I had some friends there and they played in a team, in a soft tip team and they uh, invited me to play in this team and then with 14 years I had the team to play all weekend and that was the beginning and I also had the chance to play every weekend and after that I found some tournaments next to me and it was a good start for me I think also I had some opportunities to play darts definitely and you mentioned that you got introduced to steel tip darts a a little bit after that and we see you play on the development tour in 2016 2018 as well how did you find those early experiences of the PDC setup Uh, it was my first touch with the PDC I didn't know anything about the PDC and uh, I saw the saw the tournament in the internet and then I thought okay uh, try it drive to the area and uh, play this tournament but uh, I didn't know anything before and uh, it was a great experience it was more quiet than the other tournaments I played before and uh, for me, it was really interesting, and I and after the moment, I thought, okay, I think I will be. Uh, I like to do the next steps to get the level to play more on this event. Yeah, we saw that the next step for you, twenty nineteen. You went to Q School for the first time. What persuaded you back then to give Q School a, a go for the first time? Uh, I 
I think it's nearly the same uh, as with the development tour in 216. I didn't know what Q scroll is, what the tour cards are, what the pros are, and I thought, okay, uh, everybody go and generate to this to play there. And I thought, okay, I try to make the next step to learn more and go there, but I have no. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to say, but I have no expectations. And uh, so that year, 2019, it was a a memorable year as well. It was the year that you made your debut on the European Tour in Saarbrück. And what was that experience like playing on the big stage for the first time? uh, It was so fantastic. It was the best experience I had in my life before. Uh, To play there in front of the crowd and so many people are singing my name. And it was... uh, yeah, it was a big start. And after that, I, I, uh, thought, uh, I said to me, okay, Lucas, that is what you like to play in the next years. And you must work for it and try everything to get back on the stage. And it was my start. Yeah, it certainly was. And you were back on that stage in 2020. You get your first win on the European tour but around this time darts it's very different because of the pandemic did you have a break from darts then or were you one of the players who kept going and played a lot online Uh, I played a lot online and uh, I think uh, in this time I put maybe 30% on top I played much more than before a lot of online tournaments and uh, I it was going better and better and better and at home I played a 90 plus before, near 100 before I had the chance to play against some PDC stars over the COVID uh, Facebook uh, tournament. I played against Andy Bolton, I played against uh, Mike the Decker and so on and that, that was the best training for me and uh, I can say I took the chance to play more at home and after that I was better yeah so you go from playing against these PDC players at home to then playing them in the tournaments in person 2021 we've still got the blocks of players championship events you get that call up to play in one of them what do you remember about being in that room with all the world's best players and playing in those events that week Uh, yes it was after the um Super League from Germany and then I had the chance to play there and I stepped into the room and saw every starter and I thought oh my god it's <laughs> so amazing <laughs> and I had a little yeah it's difficult to explain my heart beats faster and uh, I had a smiling in my face because uh, I had the chance to be there I worked for it and I had the chance I took the chance and uh, my first game against Darius Labanauskas, I won the decider 6-5 to five and oh, it's, it's, it was another great experience for me and going the next step, the next step, the next step, was, it, it feel good to uh, get some back for the work uh, I put it in. And fast forward to the start of 2022 and you narrowly miss out on a tour card at Q School on legs difference. How tough was that to take coming so close to achieving that dream of winning a tour card? Oh, it was really hard for me. Uh, before, I didn't thought I had the chance to win a tour card, and when you are so close to it, after that, it was so uh, hard for me. Uh, maybe I need one month to uh, come down and get the, the head up. Um, but I think after that, uh, it was good uh, not to win the tour card at this moment because I think it was too early. And I think um, the, I learned more in losing that uh, I get if I win it. And, and after being so close in 2022, a year later in 2023, Q School doesn't go to plan. You finish that final stage without a point, but some tough draws each day I think you lost to three players that would go on to win tour cards how did you reflect on that week at Q School? Uh, after that I said I was not good enough uh, 
before Q school, I said to me, okay, this is your time, Lucas. You're already now 2022. It uh, was a good year. I played fantastic games. I had good results. And I thought, okay, come on, this year you will take it. But maybe I put too much pressure on myself with it. And after that, I'm losing against three people who won the tour card. Uh, I thought, okay, you're not ready. It's not enough to play a good year. There's so much more to learn. And it was difficult because I didn't know what I uh, should to learn. Uh, what what must I learn to do the next steps? Uh, and it's it was a really hard year for me because the results was okay. But my level, my playing level was not so good, not so good as the year before. And yes. Yeah, you talk about learning in the game still. Looking back on that 2023, two Challenge Tour finals, you won a week on the Modus Super Series as well, a semi-final in the German Super League. What did you learn from last year heading into 2024? I should work more. It's... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, the training at home is really important, but uh, the training during the tournament, uh, during uh, when you lose games... It's so much more to learn, um, not only to play darts, it's all about around darts. And I think I now I know some more points, uh, how I, um, what I must learn. And yeah, uh, as I, the results was good in 2023, but uh, the my level was not so good and I didn't expect that I had the results but I had it <laughs> well we then come on yeah. to this year and at the sixth attempt you win your card at Q school you called it a dream come true after many years of dreaming of winning a card but you said that going into Q school this year you felt the least ready for it and went in with lower expectations why was that? maybe uh, I, this year I I uh, thought okay you are not ready to get the tour card and maybe uh, I took the pressure from me with uh, with this answer and maybe this is this was the key to uh, feel a little bit uh, a little bit more confidence at the tournament yes and for me as I said before I didn't hit the level last year and I thought okay you don't have the level at the moment to reach the tour card to go on the pro tour to be one of the best 128 players of the world but sometimes you get uh, these efforts when you don't uh, sing on it well that memorable week at Q school you get to the final stage uh, a quarter final on the first day another point on the board in day two then you go out in round one on day three how are you feeling going into that final day still well in contention of, of getting a tour card just do it <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah on the first day uh, in the quarter final uh, I made the five the fifth leg and after that I said okay you had the plans for challenge tour you had to plan a week for motors with Drago Team Horvath and all these things are in my head and I lost the game <laughs> and the second day <laughs> it was really uh, <laughs> difficult in my head because uh, I didn't thought I can reach the quarter final in the final stage then I reached the quarter final and I was in front and then all the other things are in my head and yes on the final day I said to me just do it Uh, you can do it because you are good enough you need two points and uh, if you uh, win the two points then uh, it's on (laughs) <laughs> it's so difficult to explain when you don't find the right words for it because it was a really difficult feeling in me yeah it was hard but I do it uh, I did it <laughs> yeah that's exactly what you did two points on that final day it's enough to earn that tour card via the order of merit what was that moment like when you found out that you had done enough and you were a tour card holder <laughs> I 
I think uh, I was the saddest uh, tour card winner of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I met so many other plans, uh, not with the tour card. I planned a challenge tour and anything else. And then I said to my girlfriend, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I must <laughs> travel more than before. <laughs> and uh, she smiled and uh, gave me a kiss and uh, everything was fine. Glad to hear it. Well, the PDC is a professional tour for darts players, but we know many players still work and play darts. And you mentioned it earlier that you're still working as well. What is it you do for work and how do you juggle work and darts at the same time? Uh, I'm a mechanic. Uh, um, I can also make my own darts if I had time for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also work at my normal job. Um, it's a little bit uh, difficult to complain to make booths but it's okay uh, I had a, a lot of more spaces for my work but uh, I also must work enough hours to make free uh, but without my work uh, this doesn't uh, I can't or it was too hard to handle or uh, only that is not uh, not enough at the moment and I read your colleagues at work, they also like to play you at darts during their breaks and that the work environment is a nice change for you from the stressful life it can be sometimes as a darts player. Have any of your work colleagues managed to beat you at darts yet? <laughs> Not yet. One <laughs> <laughs> uh, college manager, one uh, worker had the uh, board at home after uh, I gave it him for two weeks. And they also train in the uh, in the breaks, uh, but they are not good enough to beat me. But it's really uh, funny to play in the breaks a little bit, talk about darts, and oh, everybody is looking, and it feel good that I'm interested in what I do. Good times. Well, one player who's very topical in the darts world at the moment is Luke Littler, and if my translation is right your last name Weinig in English means few so has anyone called you the German Luke Littler? <laughs> not before I'm not good enough at the moment <laughs> I think <laughs> no, I, yeah it's it's so fantastic to see what uh, Luke is playing and it's more than another level and um, it's great to see but uh, no one uh, called me that before <laughs> They only called me German Gerber Price <laughs> because I think we had the same arm sides, but <laughs> it's... <laughs> well, I've, I've got to ask you off the back of that then, who would win in an arm wrestle, you or Gerwin Price? Uh, maybe Price, I think, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little bit too shy to ask him, but maybe in one year we will do it. <laughs> well, we look forward to that and and finally let's finish back to this weekend in Munich it's the, the the first Euro Tour you mentioned that you played in Belgium you went all the way to a last leg decider with Rob Cross the, the draw for this weekend is not out yet when we're talking it could be a, a Peter Wright maybe a Nathan Aspinall in the first round is there anyone that you'd like to play on that stage or do you not have a preference who you play? Um I think it's not so cool to play against another German on the, in the first round. Uh, we are eight German players, or maybe seven in the first round. Uh, the chance is there, but I wish uh, some opponents like uh, Peter Wright or Nathan Espinel. Uh, I think it's a little bit easier for me to play against the big names uh, than the other ones. Uh, okay, it's uh, it's not the right answer but I feel more confidence uh, to play against the big ones and yeah I take every one <laughs> that's a good way to be well Lucas it's been a pleasure to get you on the show thanks very much for giving us some of your time and we wish you all the best for not just this weekend in Munich but what else is to come in 2024 as well okay thank you very much guys it was a pleasure to, to make it with you <laughs>